When I think back to my youth, some of my most important memories of my family life are family dinners, mostly on Sundays, because that was the time that we all could gather around the table. Now that's a little different story than most people of my generation. Most people of my generation had far more frequent times to sit down with their families. This happening became so important to me that years later, as I was sitting at my own kitchen table, charting the course of this new business that I was thinking I might start, um, that I realized there's a, there was a synergy between what happened on those once a week family meals when we were all there. The rest of us gathered other days. That once a week time when my father was there too was so important and made such an impression. I, ne I never go into anybody's home where there isn't a table. There may not be two tables, but there's a table. And in some of my daughter's friends as they started, they didn't have tables, but they had a coffee table. And so sometimes I would even see them put placemats out on that table. So the table is pretty important. If we think about it in terms of families, it's where we mark our milestones together. It's where we share our dreams. It's that conversation that happens because we're captive around that table for that amount of time. It's where we solve problems. It's where we bury hatchets, we give thanks, we plan for the future. And it's also where we teach children the important values that families teach. Sharing, faith, cooperation, integrity, communication. So put all of that together and that's where the idea for The Pampered Chef came from. As I know that you can attest, an entrepreneur's mind looks for opportunity everywhere. And we see that so much today. We look for it in, in economic conditions. We look for it in emerging technology, in changing social norms. For goodness sakes, last week I heard about a man in Boston who is now selling and shipping snow around the country. Is this an entrepreneurial idea or what? I, I'm, I'm sure he will not be very successful in Wisconsin with that notion or in Illinois as well. Some of the simple things are most important. First of all, whatever you do, follow your passion because you are gonna be more successful at something you're passionate about. I love the example of the accountant who at 50 said, what do I wanna do with my life? He's good at numbers. He's not passionate about numbers. So figure out, first of all, where you are. What are you really passionate about? And figure out how you work in that way. Second, again, simply, this is, this is incredibly simple, demonstrate integrity always in everything you do, even if no one is watching. I assure you, more people are watching and aware of what you're doing than you have any idea. Even your grandchild sitting in the back of the car who says, you know, that light was yellow, Grandma. It, um, follow your passion and demonstrate integrity always. There's always going to be somebody who is more talented, there's somebody who can outsmart you, there's somebody who's more competitive, there's somebody who's even more charismatic, but if you work hard and you work with integrity and you live with integrity, people will think about you differently and you will get an edge in whatever you're doing. And the third one, very, very simple, stay true to your purpose. For me, purpose is all about what's your mission in life. You know, for us, we sell kitchen tools and we're not very successful if we don't sell them. But what's our purpose? Our purpose, every time I see a group sitting around a table, I know that is our purpose. Make cooking easy, make it approachable, make it inspirational, make it fast. Give people what they need in order to prepare food quickly so that they can get to the payoff. Sitting down around the table with friends, relatives, children. I learned so much about my children when they were teenagers and they did not want to talk to me when they were locked at the table with what just happened to be their favorite meal. They opened up. 
they talked, they had their friends come. If you are ever in a situation where you have to make a judgment call and you have even the slightest doubt about going with what's been recommended to you as the path versus what your inner conscience is telling you. He said, here's what I want you to think about. Think about a headline news story in tomorrow's newspaper in your town that you'll walk out of your house and pick up from the curb. Not many of us do that anymore, but this was about 15 years ago. And when you open it and you put it on the breakfast table, for your spouse, your children, your neighbors, the people you work with to read that story. And it's written by an informed and moderately critical reporter. Would you still make the decision based on what's in that newspaper criticizing you for that decision? And he said, I want to be very clear. We can afford to lose money we cannot afford to lose even a shred of reputation. What a powerful story. What a powerful um, lesson, rule to follow. So reputation, and, and at that moment I thought, Warren, you and I, <laughs> we are together on this because you, your reputation doesn't, it isn't always correct. But you have to work overtime to make sure that it is correct and it is in the best possible light, which means you have to look at all sides and you have to make the decision that is gonna protect the reputation of your business. An honest, a true decision, but one that is gonna protect rep reputation even if it causes you to lose a little bit of profit. So you do have that gut, all of us do. You have that person sitting on your shoulder saying, danger, 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 and sometimes you have to overcome, and sometimes you just have to say, I've got it, I can do this, and I know I'm doing the right thing. I think that it helps when you work doing something you love because then you feel you're more authentic and more of an authority about making those decisions and picking those paths. Unimaginable is only the capacity to overcome fears and go down a path I would say a path that doesn't look like it's too scary or too, too bizarre, but a, a path that others have tread, let's say, and figure it out for yourself. And the unimaginable becomes the greatest joy and surprise in your life.